Maximum Fund and IUL for Tax-Free Retirement Income. In this episode, I'm going to address the question, how do life insurance policies build cash value? And I'm going to show you the best ones that do that in order to have living benefits like tax-free retirement income. Get ready. You're going to learn some things that even insurance agents don't understand. I'm Doug Andrew. I've been a financial strategist and a retirement planning specialist uh, for more than 46 years. I actually got uh, my insurance licenses clear back in 1974, and I've taught uh, over 10,000 uh, life insurance agents in America primarily, and many of them paid $6,000 to come through a three-day training. They sat there with their mouths open, and they, they'd been selling insurance for 20 or 30 years. They didn't know what they didn't know. So when people ask the question, how do life insurance policies build cash value? There's two types of insurance policies that have cash value. They're both classified as permanent insurance. One is whole life, one is universal life. In other episodes, I explained that whole life was originally designed for death benefit. How can I have coverage or a death benefit if I die, whether I die next year or if I die at age 100, I wanna be covered for my whole life. What is the minimum premium that I can pay on a level basis to be covered for my whole life? Now, whole life insurance can be used to access money or cash value for living benefits, but generally the rate of return is far less, usually half of what a max funded indexed universal life insurance contract can actually create. Universal life was created in 1980 primarily for the purpose of living benefits to take the least amount of insurance that the IRS will let you get away with, so to speak, and put in the most premium that the IRS allows as fast as they allow under three tax laws. And then it can turn into a tax-free cash cow where your money can double every seven to 10 years that every million you accumulate by the time you retire can generate 80, 90, $100,000 a year of tax-free income into perpetuity if you live to be 120. Whole life insurance can't even come close to that. Maybe they might generate about 40,000 a year on a million dollars of cash value. So let's just assume that you want to have the best rate of return for living benefits in this particular episode. And so and let me just be very simple as we, we look at how life insurance is created and where cash value comes from, because the question is, how do life insurance policies build cash value? So I'm gonna super simplify this. Uh, let's say that uh, this is the, the actual cost of insurance and it's called COI. Okay, cost of insurance, and uh, this is age, and we won't start at age zero. Uh, we'll, let's just start at age 30, and we'll go out here and uh, 10, 10, 20, okay, we'll go out here, let's say this is age 65, and let's say this is age 100. Now, you know, common logic, uh, just common sense would say, you know, if you look at the mortality table in America, Back when I started in 1974, there was approximately two deaths per thousand 30 year olds, okay, if you're a male. The insurance companies use actuarial tables. And so what happens is, is there's only so many, the, the chance of a 30 year old dying is, is very low. And so that's the cost of the insurance. If we had a thousand in a, in a fraternity, and we knew that two of us were gonna check out that year, according to statistics, we don't know who the two are, but we pass around a hat and everybody contributes $2, and we would have 2,000 so that we could award $1,000 to each of the surviving you know, beneficiaries. So the cost of insurance per thousand would be uh, $2 if you're a 30 year old. Now, every year that you get older, you have to put more money in the hat, $3, then $4, then $5. See, that's the cost of insurance because the chance of you dying, the number of people out of 1,000 45-year-olds or 65-year-olds, in fact, based upon the mortality tables back in the 1958 mortality, 1980 mortality tables, by the time you were 65 in America, one-third of American males were dead that had been born, one-third were already gone. And so that's called the mortality table. 
So that's the pure cost of insurance, which is inherent in term insurance, a whole life or universal life. There's an actual COI. Basically, cash value was created when whole life was introduced. And it says, hey, instead of uh, paying this and having super expensive insurance costs as you're older, what could we pay in a level premium for our whole life and have coverage for our whole life? Well, basically, whole life says, well, if you will uh, pay this much, okay, during the early years and you keep paying that much in the later years, what does that uh, create? Well, see, you're way, way overpaying the early years for the amount of actual cost, but you are underpaying here in the later years. So you overpay, then you underpay. That's what creates cash value. Because this overpayment accumulates in the insurance company and under the Internal Revenue Code, because you're helping to take pressure off of government to help widows and orphans or people retiring. And so they let you accumulate this money inside the insurance policy tax-free. And that's the beauty of it. But see, most people up until 1980 uh, were trying to pay the least premium to be covered for their whole life. Now, there's variations of this that creates more cash value. Uh, some people said, well, how much could we pay in here just to 65 and then stop? And because of this extra amount in here, that will keep this going because the interest on this cash value will keep it going until most people die. Well, then you could do, let's say, 20 years. You could pay for 10 years. Well, what if you just paid one single premium? Well, if you wanted a million dollars of life insurance, Maybe, and you're down here in your early years, maybe you put in $125,000 in one payment. Now, $125,000, if it was earning 7%, will double every 10 years. The insurance companies are smart. They go, well, $125,000 in one payment, based on when you are likely going to die, based on statistics, $125,000 will double every 10 years to two fifty, dollars to five hundred, dollars to a million, and bingo, they say, this is the premium. Universal Life said, well, why are we doing that for death benefit only? Why don't we pay <laughs> way up here? Why don't we pay a huge lump sum and have so much cash value that uh, this cash value is being used for tax-free income? And if the amount of insurance qualifies as part of the, the money, in other words, your cash value as it grows, it qualifies as part of the death benefit is a better way to say it then the cost of insurance does not go up. The cost per thousand does, but the amount that the insurance company is at risk goes down because you're putting so much money into it that there is no difference hardly between the cash value and the death benefit. So the answer to the question, how do life insurance policies build cash value? It's by way, way overpaying. Now that sounds negative at first, but let me show you why this is a huge positive. So when you're designing an insurance policy, primarily for living benefits, you can learn on this channel by uh, watching other educational videos why Index Universal Life, if you're doing it for living benefits, knocks the socks off of whole life policy as far as creating predictable income. So let me give you just a few brief you know, uh, examples of this. Let's say that you could put money into a retirement account, maybe not as much as $100,000 a year. You can't put that much into an IRA or 401k. There's limits and so forth or a Roth. That's why a maximum funded indexed universal life, which I call the laser fund, because it means liquid assets safely earning returns, is my favorite vehicle, but you're designing it with the least amount of insurance, again, that the IRS will let you get away with and put in the most money. So let's say you were going to put in a hundred grand a year, $500,000. And so you designed the policy to do that so that when you put in 500,000, there is 500,000 of cash value. Now, most of uh, the index universal life policies that I've owned, I've earned between 8.2 to 10.07% net. Let's just use the worst decade since the great depression, 2000 to 2010. 
Using Index Universal Live, people would have averaged 7.23%. That's without rebalancing. Other episodes teach you about rebalancing that can take your rate of return to in, in excess of 10%. But at 7.2%, rule of 72, 500,000 will double to a million in 10 years. Many people who had a million in the year 2000 had 2 million in their Index Universal Life policies 10 years later. So let's say it doubles to a million and you decide to retire. How much could that million dollars generate in tax-free income. If it's whole life, it could probably generate about 30, 40,000 a year. If it's universal life, it could generate 80 to 100,000 a year. So which one would you prefer? Where can you find anything in the Internal Revenue Code that a million dollars generates tax-free 80 to 100,000 a year? You say, well, my IRAs are earning, I hope, 10%. Uh, yeah, show me. But if they did, you're not netting 100,000, you're only netting about 65,000 after taxes. So that's why it is probably the most dynamic instrument for my choice to put serious cash to accumulate my money tax-free, be able to access my money tax-free when I die it blossoms in value and transfers income tax-free, but it passes the liquidity safety rate of return test with flying colors. And that's why the cash value inside of a max funded indexed UL is so incredibly advantageous during retirement. So my favorite is called the laser fund. Uh, in fact, if this has intrigued you to learn more, let me show you how you can learn by reading this book. I will gift this book to you free. You don't have to pay uh, the retailer $20. Claim your free copy by doing this. If you simply go to laserfund.com, that's L-A-S-E-R, laserfund.com, and pay the nominal uh, $5.95 shipping and handling, I'll pay for the book. Uh, you pay for the shipping. I'll fire this out to you. And there's some other alternatives if you'd like to listen and learn or watch and learn and so forth. But uh, this book is so powerful. Uh, it's 300 pages, charts, graphs, explanations. And this side of the book is actually uh, 12 chapters with 62 actual client stories of how the laser fund and the cash value inside of a max funded indexed UL can be used for retirement, for, for uh, business working capital, for college funding that knocks the socks off of a 529 plan, by the way, real estate management, emergency funds, estate planning, all kinds of uses. This, this is like a, a, a financial Swiss army knife.